Hello, I'm Becky Goldsmith with Piece of Cake and I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful invisible applique stitch. My applique piece is already finger pressed and pinned to my block. I've got my toothpick handy and I've got my needle already threaded and knotted. I'm using a short needle. I'm using the Clover size 12 black gold needle and I'm using the uh, Masterpiece 50 weight 2 ply thread from the bobbins. To begin, bring your needle up always from underneath the applique fabric. Now this shape is a leaf and this flat end does not get turned under. It's going to be covered by a stem. So when I bring my needle up, I want to bring it up right here at this point where uh, this side of the leaf begins. So I'm going to go underneath the applique and bring my needle up through. The reason you always bring your needle up here is so that when you pull your thread up, the knot and the tail of thread are buried underneath the applique piece. If you bring your thread up from underneath the background, you're going to end up with a lot of loose tails of thread that may um, slide out from under the edge of the applique when you finally layer and baste your quilt and they can be visible. They can shadow through the, the background fabric. It's called needle turn applique because you very often can use your needle to turn the edge under, which I'm going to do right here. Because I have finger pressed this piece, that edge is going to turn under nice and neat right underneath um, with the line that I've drawn on there turned to the back. Now I want to reach up and zoom the camera in so you can see more clearly what I'm doing. The needle goes into the background fabric next to the edge of the applique. Now I've pulled the thread out away from the edge so that you can clearly see where the thread has come out of the applique. I want the needle to go in right next to that edge, right across that edge from where the thread has come out of the edge of the applique. So I'm going into the background. I'm going to hit the middle finger of my underneath hand. I'm hitting it. As I turn my hand to go from right to left, I'm scraping over that underneath finger. I'm bending over it and the needle comes up through the background and the edge of the applique on the upward stitch. Now let me quickly draw you a little picture so that it's clear. So when I say that I'm going in right next to the edge of the applique, what I mean is if this is the edge of the applique and if this spot is marking where my thread has come out of the applique where I want the needle to go in is right at the edge of the applique directly across that line not to the right not to the left so let's watch that again I'm going straight down now if you have trouble seeing where the thread has come out of the fabric pull the thread perpendicular from the edge and you can bring your needle down that thread until you meet the edge of the applique. Go straight down. Now when I say straight down, what I mean is my needle is perpendicular to the background. I don't mean that I'm going straight down toward my midsection. I'm going straight down toward the table. If my hands are level with the tabletop, it's as if I'm drilling for oil in the tabletop. So I'm going to go straight down. The needle falls to the right. The point of the needle is traveling from right to left under the background. I'm bending over my underneath finger and coming up through all the layers, just like that. There's your stitch. 
Now let me back the camera up just a bit so you can see this. Look at the way I'm holding the needle. This is very different from the way you probably hold the needle, and I want to explain to you why I do that. Now when I'm teaching a class, this is the point at which I encourage my students to pick up a toothpick and come up, hold, the, hold the toothpick the way I'm holding it here. So if you'd like to stop the video and go get a toothpick, that would probably be a good idea. Now, to hold the toothpick the way I am, what I've done is place the end of the toothpick at the end of my index finger. I'm bringing my middle finger and thumb around. Really, it's these fingers that hold the needle. My finger, my index finger, is acting as a stop at the end of the needle so that when I'm sewing, as I've gripped the needle, this index finger holds my fingers in place on the, on the needle itself. Let's talk a little bit about the way you normally hold your needle. I'll bet it's like this. And I can tell you why, and I can tell you why you might not want to hold your needle this way. Alright, let's imagine that the edge of my hand is the edge of the fabric, the edge of the applique fabric. If you bring your needle up at the edge of the fabric, what I'm telling you is you want to make your stitch straight down here, right across from this uh, point where the needle has come out of the edge of the applique. But if you have your needle in your hand like this, you're holding it parallel to the fabric. So you may know the needle should go in in one spot, but there's a really good chance that instead you're putting your needle into the background somewhere to the left of where you should be. And when you hold your needle this way, you have more of a tendency not to come straight up through the layers, but to glide out at an angle. What you end up with is a running stitch. So if your needle and thread come out of the applique here, and then go into the background over there, or if they make the reverse trip coming out of the background at an angle and then finally coming out the edge of the applique somewhere over to the left, what you end up is a stitch like this. And when you pull your thread tight, these two points, these two points are pulled together. And what happens is your applique pleats up. So if you end up with that when you tighten your stitch if everything pulls together, but then when you loosen your stitch, your applique is loose, what's happening is that you're making a running stitch at the edge of the applique. And if you go back to the way you hold your needle, you can fix some of that. Now that said, it's not that it's impossible to get a good stitch holding your needle this way. It's just that it's um, something that you have to focus on more clearly. Now one other part of this is that when you hold your needle like this, I would bet money that you are probably bending your needles. And the reason you're bending them is because the needle is slick. And if you have your hands on the needle like this and you're pushing the needle into the fabric, your fingers want to slide down the needle. To keep a grip on it, you have to grab it really tight, and when you grab it really tight, that bends the needle. I never bend a needle. It happens so rarely that I almost never have to open a new pack of needles. The other thing that I find is that because I'm holding the needle this way, I don't get pain through this thumb joint. Now the end of my finger can get sore. And so right here is where I very often wear an adhesive thimble. I like needle grip it when I don't need much protection. I like thimble it when I need a little more protection. And when I really want more significant protection at the end of this finger, I use the leather thimble pads. Each of those three products are good in its own way. So let's go back to the stitch. Here we go. Now watch how my hand works. I'm going straight down at the edge of the applique. I'm scraping across my underneath finger and bending over it and catching the applique on the upward stitch. Now my 
grip on the needle did not change at any point during that part of the stitch, but now I have to let go of it. And right there, that's why you hold your needle the way you do. To get your needle back in position, I do that motion as I'm pulling the thread up and I'm, I've done it so much that I don't even think about it when I do it. This is a new thing if you've not done it before. You're going to think about it a lot. Um, one thing you can do as, as you try this to get your needle back in, in position in your hand is to grab the point and then shift around and do what I just did there. Now, that's what my right hand does with the needle. The other hand, my left hand, is also very important. Notice where my thumb is. It's probably in a different position than you hold, hold your thumb. Most applicators that I see hold their thumb below the edge of the applique. Now when your thumb is below the edge of the applique, so are your underneath fingers. So if you've got your thumb down here, when you make your downward stitch, you are probably not hitting an underneath finger. And you can, you can begin this stitch just fine with no finger underneath, but to complete the stitch, it doesn't work as well. You need a finger to work against on the underside, and you need your thumb in front of the stitch to help you determine the length of your stitch and to make a better stitch. So first, let's talk about stitch length. I like my stitches to be shorter than an eighth of an inch and longer in most cases than a sixteenth of an inch. They're probably closer to a sixteenth of an inch than they are an eighth of an inch most of the time. The reason an eighth inch stitch is bad in hand applique is the same reason it's bad if you were to use an eighth inch long stitch in your machine piecing. It just doesn't hold the fabric together well enough. It looks loose and gappy. So, when you bring your thumb up and across that line, you want to bring it up so that you are sewing into the end of your thumb. If you bring your thumb up and you're sewing into it this way, into the side of your thumb, what you're going to find is you're going to have a very uncomfortable kink in your wrist and eventually you'll relax your wrist and then you're going to be trying to sew up and away from yourself and that doesn't work very well. So what I do is walk my hand in from the side and I line my thumb up so that I'm sewing into the end of my thumb. Keep your wrist relaxed and straight. Let me zoom in a little bit more now. So I go straight down. On, let me also point out that right there on the underneath side is my left ring finger. And I've got my ring finger and my little finger on my right hand resting with the fabric between them. I've, I'm resting my two hands together so they're a little bit hinged. I find that that's easier for me. So my hands are together. I'm going to bring the needle in next to the edge of the applique. I'm hitting my underneath finger. My right hand is falling to the right. I'm bending over that underneath finger making a hill. Now my thumb is a scant eighth of an inch away from the beginning of the stitch, which means my stitch will be shorter than an eighth of an inch. And my two fingers together are pinching the layers of fabric together so that as I come through those layers, I'm coming up through them almost straight up. Let me do that one more time. Just like that. Do not be afraid to pull your stitches tight. Because if you leave them loose, your applique will be loose. Be aware that you have to keep up with your seam allowance and keep it turned under. There's no benefit to turning under more than you can control, so don't worry about turning under three inches worth of seam allowance. Just turn under what you can manage right here. Let me show you two things you do not want to do. You do not want to begin your stitch out away from the edge, because if you do, your stitch will be very visible. 
you also do not want to make a stitch that catches way too much of the applique. Again, your stitch will be way too visible. There's not really an applique law that says on the upward stitch you can only catch one thread or two threads or three threads. You catch enough of the fabric so that the stitch is nearly invisible without catching so little that you haven't caught the thread at all, or I'm sorry, caught the fabric at all, or not so much that you've caught too much. This direction that I'm sewing from right to left with the horizon is the way the majority of people sew. There is another direction, at least one more direction, that people sew, and that would be um, vertically, sewing toward yourself. I'm going to show you that next. Now you'll notice I removed that pin. My thread was hanging up on it and I don't need it anymore anyway. I've sewn beyond that pin so I can take it out. But I'm not going to take out the next pin until I need to. In the first stitch that I showed you, I began here and was working over the top, as we say, so that the stitch is over the top edge of the applique and the seam allowance turns underneath toward your body. The stitch I want to show you now is what we call stitching vertically or stitching toward yourself. In this case, the seam allowance that turns under is on the right side of the applique and it turns under there. I always begin by bringing my needle up in the same spot that I did the last time at the beginning of this stitch. Now you can't put your left hand in position so that you're sewing into the end of your thumb because that would be completely unnatural. You'd end up with this bad kink in your, in your wrist again. So I want to come in more from the side. I'm going to be sewing into sort of this top corner of my thumb. Now let me tell you that this is the direction that I more naturally sew. And I know that it's rare because I've tried to teach this to people. And unless you are predisposed to sew this direction, it's not a good idea to try it. It's just confusing. But there are some of you out there like me for whom this is the more natural way to sew. And for those of you, I would say, this is just as right as the other way. All right, so to sew this direction, take your needle, it's still needle turn hand applique, and turn that edge under. Get your thumb over the fold. You still want to put your needle in right next to the edge of the applique, and right next to where the thread has come out of the edge of the applique. But now instead of my hand falling to the right, my hand is going to fall to the back. I'm going to bend over my underneath finger and come up just inside my thumbnail. It's a very similar stitch. I'm holding the needle exactly the same way that I did in the other stitch. It's possible that this stitch looks a little faster than the other stitch. I don't think it's because of the stitch. I think it's because this is the way that I sew more naturally. So I do it a little faster. I still have my underneath ring finger poked out there and I'm resting my other ring finger on top of it. And there's the stitch. Just like that. Now I'll cover outer points and inner points and curves in other videos. But this is the basic stitch. It does not change. So let me show you what the stitches look like on the back of the applique. They have a subtle angle to them and that's because you put your needle in on one side of the edge of the applique and you bring it out on the other side of the edge of the applique. If I could take these stitches and flatten them out they would be nearly perfectly end-to-end. -end. If I flattened them out and there was a gap between them like this, that's bad. 
that's where you've either put your needle in um, not right across the fold or on your upward stitch you've traveled out at an angle. The most perfect stitch is one that goes up through the edge of the applique and goes straight back down. Travels over, goes straight back up and down and then over. On the front of the applique you can see this and again let me zoom in. When your thread is a good match you never see the stitch. There should never be any angle to the stitch. It should be straight up and straight down. Nice and tight. Now while it looks like the edge is a little bit dimpled over time and with quilting you never even see those little dimples in the edge of, the, of your applique. I hope you found this helpful and that you enjoy doing your invisible applique stitch. Happy stitching!